Just when you thought C or Rust was fast enough, there's a new JavaScript compiler available, and we're going to crush the 1 million nested for loop benchmark with it. Let's look at benchmarks. You can see that plain old JavaScript with Node.js runs in 1.8 seconds. Both the C and Rust versions are about 50 milliseconds faster. But let's see the JavaScript running with the crush script ahead of time compiler. 4.5 milliseconds? Is that right? That's over 400 times faster. How is that even possible? The answer is that CrushScript implements some blazingly fast optimizations that compilers like LLVM and GCC are too afraid to implement. Let's take a look at how it works. Here's the source code. It's written in Rust because it needs to be blazingly fast, and it uses the aux rate, which powers rolldown and is funded by VC money, so that means it's gotta be good. The core of the program is that it reads the JavaScript file that we pass in on the command line, applies some optimizations, and then builds an executable file from the optimized code. What kind of optimizations? Well, let's take a look at the 1 billion nested for loop benchmark code. As you can see, a 10,000 length array is generated in a for loop, and then only a single element of that array is being read, and then the array is discarded, so most of the work is being wasted. So only the element that's being read needs to be computed. That's the slotted array read optimization, which reduces the amount of work significantly. Integer division is painfully slow compared to basically anything else you could do on a modern processor. The module operation being done in the loop has a numerator of the loop index and the denominator that's fixed across iterations. Let's consider that value as a new variable j mod u. The initial value of j mod u is the same as the initial value of j mod u, which is zero. And if you consider how that value changes as the loop executes, j is incremented by one, so j mod u should also increase by one, but if it ever equals u, then it'll be reset to zero. This code is equivalent, so the running module operation implements that improvement. I'm honestly kind of surprised that LLVM doesn't have this optimization built in. Finally, there are two more optimizations that were possible in this code, but CrushScript didn't need them to beat everything. If you consider what the inner loop is actually doing, it's repeatedly calculating the sum of the digits 0 to u minus 1, and then possibly a partial sum at the end. And if you know anything about triangular numbers, you know that the sum to 45, I mean, here it is. So the optimizer could replace the inner loop for loop with a couple divisions and multiplications and save most of the rest of the work of the program. Now you know how it works, the question you should have is, should I go out there and start using CrushScript today? No, that's a terrible idea. It currently works for every JavaScript program in the world, as long as it looks an awful like the 1 billion nested for loop benchmark code, which is to say, basically none of them. Don't forget to star the repo on GitHub. Why did I make CrushScript? I made CrushScript because I wanted to show how bad the 1 billion nested for loop benchmark is. Fundamentally, it is a single data point on a single person's computer, a single set of parameters. The data doesn't even show multiple run lengths to determine what amount of time is spent in the loop and what amount is overhead. Also, can we agree that the visualization is not very intuitive? It's a bouncing ball that goes back and forth, and it's hard to tell relative speed. The ball should all go the same direction, at the very least. And imagine a bus stop. There. That's much better. Now, what can you really take away from this benchmark? There's not much. This is a benchmark that is basically pure computation It doesn't involve any memory allocations or I.O. All of the ahead-of-time compiled languages are going to compile to basically the same machine code, with some amount of overhead. The just-in-time languages are also going to use similar machine code, with some amount of time on top to compile the file. This time is reduced if it's a language with a bytecode representation like C-sharp or Java, since part of the compilation is done ahead of time. This benchmark is short enough that the benchmark results are going to be skewed because of this time being considered part of the runtime. Finally, all of the interpreter languages are going to look awful, Python in particular. Look how bad it is. Really, the takeaway from this benchmark is that it doesn't really matter what language you use as long as it's compiled the machine code at some point, so you shouldn't be using Lua or Python. I guess this benchmark isn't so bad after all.